The John Gomez Show, 1039 LI News Radio. All right, let's uh, jump over to uh, down to Washington, D.C. We've got our very own Congressman uh, Lee Zeldin. Congressman, welcome aboard. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good to be back on with you. Wow, what a connection. Are you calling from your office in D.C.? I am. Holy mackerel. This is good. You could do my show from there. You oh, are wow. crystal clear. That would be an honor. You oh. Just let me know when. Hey, listen, I'm glad I thought of that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, listen, uh, Congressman, I've, a lot of votes going down. I mean, the, the, the TPP thing is, is the real big one, right? The Trans-Pacific, whatever they call it, partnership. So last Friday, there were votes on the – a lot of acronyms as well, by the yeah. way. You have, <laughs> so TPP is, the, is a, an ongoing negotiation with uh, 11 other countries around the Pacific Rim. Uh, so that's the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Last Friday, there were two votes. One is TPA, and the other one is TAA, uh, and the TAA – uh, went down the TPA pass. Um, I voted no on both of those, um, but the TPP wasn't actually um, th- that draft hasn't been finalized. That's an ongoing negotiation. Um, but TPA is a procedural vote. It's legislation um, that would provide a a means for passing a TPP once finalized. So. Uh, yeah, also a lot of acronyms. And oh, is that the fast well. track? I know. It's like back in law school. You know, wasn't there either Barbary or, or Peeper did a lot of acronyms? I, oh, yeah. yeah. And, then I, and then I went right into the military from there, which, <laughs> uh, you know, you get so, I got so into active duty, my conversations with uh, with family back home. <laughs> You give like one one sentence with like six acronyms, and yeah. they make fun of you, and you stop doing that. Well, you know, all of a sudden you start losing. Uh, all right, already, but you know, there it, it goes to trusting you. And and I'll tell you, there's not many elected officials these days that I absolutely completely trust. Is not only investigating every single detail of every single legislation that yeah. goes through there. I mean, just complete trust that that's what you're doing. You know, and, and you're ironing it out and, and any vote you do that might be, you know, argumentative or, or maybe there's there's something that, you know, I disagree with. I have a I, I know for a fact, I, I truly believe this, that you will come on, you will you will answer the questions and, and to anybody, all constituents. hundred percent. And, and you will explain yeah. it. Yeah, oh, I, I appreciate you saying that. And I, and I understand that, you know, I, I won't be able to make everyone happy all the time. There there are these. Uh, issues that come up where you know th- there are times where I'll find half the people on one side of an issue and the other half uh, of constituents on the other side of the issue, and and half just won't be happy because you know yet you make a decision. Right. Uh, this is this is a particular issue though that uh, it wasn't fifty fifty. I, I I enjoy listening from uh, listening to constituents, uh, hearing from them, and over the course of the last few months, uh, you know I I just I, I, I believe that the first congressional district of New York uh, wanted me to vote no. And when I added that to the rest of my research, uh, it ended up being a, a, a pretty easy no vote. I always imagined, uh, Congressman Zeldin, uh, if I had gotten elected, that I would I would try and come up with some secure system. I mean, a lot of people do a lot of things over the Internet today that are very private. You know, whether you're filing your in, filing filing your taxes, a lot of banking. There's a lot, you know, credit uh, purchases and so forth. And they have systems. In fact, I, I, a friend of mine's brother uh, devised a system and they used it out, out in Arizona for you know some local elections. But I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't it be great? I mean, I truly would love to know what my constituents, all of them, what my constituents in, in my district, you know, let's say you're in, in your scenario, it's the congressional first district, which is almost all of uh, uh, Suffolk County, if not all of it. Are you all of Suffolk County? So, no, no, uh, almost yeah, all yeah, of it. Pa- part of Peter King's district and part yeah. of Steve Israel's district yeah, and Huntington. Uh, are in Suffolk. But anyway, the point I'm getting at is wouldn't it be great is if, all right, this vote's coming up, here's, here's the, you know, nuts and bolts of the vote. You know, I'm going to put it out to my, you know, constituents who enroll in this, you know, in my whatever you want to call it. I don't know whatever you want to call it. And all right, you know, the next 24, 36 hours, I'm going to, you know, I'll tally the votes that come in. And, you know, you make sure you, things in place to where, uh, you know, where you can't double vote, triple vote and so forth. 
And then just so you get a, you know, just so you get a feeling for, you know, for what the your constituents uh, think about and what their position on the issue is. Have you ever thought about that? Or is, is that? So, I mean, I, I am always trying to think of different ways that I would be able to get information from uh, yeah. constituents to understand uh, where they are on a particular issue. So there are some means available that we use, one of which is uh, sending out an email that uh, can have a link to a survey um, that will allow people to uh, weigh in on, you know, one, four, ten different issues. Okay. Um, so what we so we did that through email. Uh, we also posted that link to the survey, uh, which included questions on TPA. Oh, that's great. Uh, we we included that on our uh, social media. We also um, we we sent out an an introductory mailer just with our contact information, uh, just what kind of services our office provides. And when we did that. We just attached a card, a tear-off card to it, that gave constituents the opportunity to weigh in on particular issues to let us know what's most important. And then when we receive phone calls, emails, letters, uh, it, it all adds up to allow us to gauge um, where constituents are. And I'll tell you, when a constitu- when someone calls from the 1st Congressional District of New York letting us know where they stand on an important issue, it's a completely different assessment for for my team and I, then when someone contacts me from, you know, Chicago saying that they're in favor of me voting for TPA, and then I hear from someone from South Hold telling me to vote uh, against TPA, it, it, those are not equals. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, we, you have to sort through that as well, because we also hear from a lot of people from outside the district. Jeez, that, that's a... <laughs> That's tough. And, and ultimately, I think it comes down to you understanding what the legislation's about. You understand the impact that it has, possibly some good, some bad. And then you ultimately it rests on your shoulders. It's you, you're going to have to come up with a decision and you're going to have to defend the decision. Bottom well, line. Yeah. And I'll tell you that sometimes I will have somebody encourage me to vote against a good bill for the wrong reasons right. or encourage me to vote against um uh, i'm sorry vote 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 for a bad bill for the wrong reasons or vote against a good bill for the wrong reasons uh and what we were experiencing with the uh the, this trade legislation is that every single person who is contacting us with questions of what either the tpa legislation means or something that might be in tpp we researched it, yeah. and you know, listen. Sometimes, you know, someone would contact us with a particular concern that just wasn't actually, you know, in the TPP, right. you know, or it was a misinterpretation of the TPA. Um, you know, but we we're also hearing from a lot of people who had, uh, you know, legitimate concerns that when we researched it, they were right. And uh, you know, there, there are some people in the elected office who want to make believe like they, you know, already know all of the answers yeah. to all of the issues and. Uh, you, we really need to have elected officials in, in, in place, in office, where they're going to do their homework every time and not believe like they're the, the jack of, of all trades and, and refuse to get the answers. Congressman Zeldin, do you have uh, like a go team, uh, a go to team of of, you know, uh, advisors, you know, along the same vein here? I mean, again, just like you said, you're not no one expects you. Well, although some people may. You can't know everything. You can't be a specialist in everything. You, you just you, it's just impossible. Do you have like given like economic issues, you know, uh, uh, social issues, foreign trade issues? Do you have your own, you know, uh, I don't know, cabinet, <laughs> if I, you will? I, I that, always will seek out people who are the experts, yeah. the subject matter experts uh, on a particular bill, on an issue that is before us. Uh, if if there is a proposal, you know, if we're doing an appropriations bill and it it it's a, a you know proposal that might impact Brookhaven National Laboratory or right. Stony Brook University, um, you know, there might be other people who, uh, you know, internally with their own staff might try to figure out the right answers on their own. But why not just why not contact Stony Brook and yep. contact Brookhaven Lab, ask them the questions, see if you know an amendment should be proposed, or maybe it's better strategy not to and We've encountered this, uh, and this is going back to my time uh, with the state as well. 
Uh, but certainly here in Washington, there have been several times, it happens all week long, uh, where we're seeking out a local employer um, or a, a particular individual or group that uh, might know an issue the best. And, and I, I would encourage all elected officials to do that. And they're, they're better off for it. You have to surround yourself with the best possible people and, uh, and, and ensure that they aren't individuals who are just going to tell you what you want to hear, that they're telling you what you need to hear. Uh, when you're seeking their advice. Well, I'll tell you one thing, uh, Congressman Zeldin, on the on the issue of, of, you know, maybe calling some local employers on Long Island to get their take on things, that list is dwindling. <laughs> I hate to tell yeah. you, it the, is dwindling. We got another one that's a dealer track. They're leaving. They, I mean, the, the, the list is going on and on. The state here is really going to have to do something to turn turn things around economically. I'll yeah, tell you. And, I, and, I don't want to get you off on a, on a tangent, but. Well, no, I mean, I, you know, and just in summing up that that particular point is that we need to reduce the cost to do business. I you mean, got I was, that I was, right. I was speaking to um, a, a a local CEO uh, who owns a facility here and uh, built a manufacturing site in Ireland, and was explaining his effective tax rate here on Long Island, uh, which is north of fifty percent, and his effective tax rate. In Ireland, which is in the teens, wow! And he says, I, I, "I'm staying here on Long Island. I love it here, yeah. but I had to open that site in Ireland just because of the economics of it." And uh, you know, we just we have to understand that there are consequences to uh, you know uh, to taxes and fees and regulations that every level of government over the course of decades uh, have have added on to the to the point where. Uh, a, a, an employer chooses to leave or, or has to fold because they can't survive. Here. And really, you can't, you know, you can't expect them to do otherwise. I, honestly, how long do you want them to, just, to bleed and stay in business? It's, it's just not going to happen. And, you know, what's disturbing and concerning to me, uh, Congressman, are, and I don't know your position on this, are these IDAs, which I believe is government subsidized, uh, uh, you know, businesses. It's just not fair. I'll never forget that one fundraiser you had. I think you were running for uh, uh, state senate at the time. The guy who owned the coach uh, buses, the coach buses. The, the, oh, yeah. yep. And sure. he came out. It was against the MTA tax. That's and right. I'm telling you, it's no clearer of an, of an example to where the government is now forcing him to subsidize his, his number one competitor. Yeah, it's just that's right. mind-boggling. And, and, and you use the example of the MTA payroll tax, which was yeah. passed in the height of a recession. You create a tax yeah. on jobs. Yeah. And uh, and instead of Albany asking the MTA, what are you going to do to tighten your belt? With no questions asked, yeah. Albany says, here's $2 billion. <laughs> and, that's, and, and it's just the wrong answer. And it's, you, know, you have elected officials who... You know, feel like they know how to to spend their constituents' money better than their constituents can, uh, and they'll cut these essentially private contracts where you know you, you have you know if you're if you're some you know state legislator from the New York City area, uh, you might be cutting your own political deal to support this this tax on um, on individuals who don't even live in the city on other people's constituents. Right. Um, you know, so for for them, they're they're not doing it because it's in the best interest of good public policy. They just, you know, some people make these awful decisions because they believe it's in the the best interest of their own selfish politics, and and it all adds up. It all adds up, Congressman. It's always a pleasure uh, speaking with you. Good to have you on the program. Uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. All the best to the family, and until next time, Congressman Zeldin. Thanks so much. Thank you, John. All right, take care, Congressman Lee Zeldin on the John Gomez Show. It's good to hear from him. The John Gomez Show, 1039 LI News Radio, LI News.